I'm Brad Jager. I'm an engineer and driver with Edison 2. Let me tell you a little bit more about the mainstream class automotive XPRIZE winning very light car. The one aspect that we're different in almost all the other automotive XPRIZE entrants is that we got the efficiency through the platform of the vehicle itself versus the powertrain. Our focus was to build the, the lightest weight and the most aerodynamic car that we could. The chassis is made out of uh, steel and aluminum primarily. Uh, we do utilize a carbon fiber body on the XPRIZE race cars here as a semi-structural piece and to create the aerodynamic shape that you see on the exterior of the vehicle. In production, we're planning to use either a stamped aluminum or some sort of thermoset plastic. The one thing that most people usually realize is that the wheels are set outside from the main body structure right here. The main reason for that is both stability and aerodynamics. We're trying to reduce the frontal area of the car, and by putting the wheels to the outside, we can reduce the frontal area, yet still get a very stable and well-handling vehicle. One of the innovations that came out of our XPRIZE winning car here is their patent-pending in-wheel suspension. It allows us to package the entire suspension inside of the wheel pod here that turns with the wheel and to create space and energy absorbing structure in between the main body of the vehicle and the outer edge. So the Very Light car was entered into the mainstream class of the XPRIZE. One of the requirements for that $5 million prize was that it seat four passengers. Most people don't see it, but if you take a look inside, you can see it's quite roomy. There's plenty of legroom for tall occupants in the rear seat of the vehicle. One of the first things people realize when they look in the interior of the Very Light car is the on-wheel dash. This digital readout gives us everything we needed for the XPRIZE, including uh, how efficiently we were driving the car, speed, RPM, water, and, uh, and oil temperature. So everything that the, we needed as a driver to monitor during the XPRIZE was fed to us right up here on the dash. The second thing that people realize is that we've traded side view mirrors for rear facing cameras. We have cameras on each side looking back that give you an image right up here on the dash. And uh, same for the, the center view camera. As most of us at Edison 2 come from motorsports, we have many contacts in the racing industry. So uh, for the dash, we, went, we uh, utilized EFI technologies for their data logger and their dash display. It's something that, that I've used before in Daytona prototypes. I'm used to, to the readout and uh, the engineers are used to working with. So because we focus on platform efficiency at Edison 2, we're energy source agnostic. For the XPRIZE car, we decided to go with a single cylinder 250cc engine So the single cylinder 250cc engine that we started off with is packaged right here. We did a lot of development work ourselves. So we added a turbocharger, added exhaust gas recirculation, changed it to run on E85, uh, which meant in, uh, increasing the, the uh, compression ratio of the engine and uh, putting in milder cams. So this is the final engine that came out that we ran in the XPRIZE. Not only did it have to be an efficient engine, but it also had to meet emissions. This engine here actually created almost less than half the CO2 emissions than all the rest of the, uh, the vehicles in the XPRIZE, including the electric vehicles. So when the Progressive Insurance Automotive XPRIZE was announced, it sparked Edison 2's founder, Oliver Kutner, to assemble a team from, uh, from the racing industry. He was after the $10 million prize. It really piqued his interest. Halfway through this project, we realized that this was bigger than any of us had thought and more important. And now we're sticking with the project working on the next design, something that'll be a little bit closer to a production vehicle, that'll have uh, a little more comforts, might be a little bit more roomier, and uh, still get you know maybe 80 or 90 miles per gallon.